Hello everyone, welcome to Bit of Anatomy. In this tutorial, we will see the features of scapula. So scapula, as you can see, it is an irregular bone, flat at some points, it has got various processes which make it very much irregular. So it is situated in the posterior lateral wall of the thorax, extending from 2nd to 7th thoracic ribs. So it has got three borders, few processes, two surfaces and few ankles. First we will see the major features then uh, we will appreciate the side determination of scapula. So it has got a medial border which is very thin. So medial thin border. So there is a lateral thick border and again a thin and a shortish border the superior border. So corresponding to three borders, there are three angles, the superior angle, the inferior angle and the lateral angle. So in the lateral angle, there is a, there is presence of glenoid fossa or glenoid cavity. So these are the three angles, superior, inferior and the lateral angle part. So there are two surfaces, costal surface or the anterior surface and the dorsal surface. So, which is separated by a process here called as spinous process. So, this spinous process laterally it will extend as acromial process and in front there is one more beak-like process called as coracoid process. So, these are the three processes, the spine or the spinous process, the acromial process and the coracoid process part. So, if we determine the side now, so this is the medial border which is thin costal surface should be directed anteriorly, the spine should be posterior, the direction of the glenoid fossa or the glenoid cavity, it helps in determining the side. So in this if we appreciate, so medial border is thin, lateral border is thick, spinous process is in the posterior part and this glenoid fossa it is directed towards the left side. So this will be the left clavicle, uh, sorry, the left scapula part. So if you see the additional features and attachments of each surface, so this is the costal surface where you can appreciate some bony elevations which provides attachment to the intermuscular fibrous septa of a muscle arising from this surface called as subscapularis. So the costal surface provides origin to subscapularis, hence this surface it is also known as subscapular fossa and the medial border in the costal surface so it provides or insertion to a muscle called as serratus anterior so the serratus anterior as you know it arises in various slips so the first slip extends from the superior angle just opposite to the root of the spine the next slip or next one or two slips it extends in the remaining border of the remaining medial border and the remaining slips, the last five or six slips, it gets attached into the inferior angle. So this is some artificial foramen here, not a natural one. So these are the attachments in the costal part, subscapularis and the serratus anterior. So if you see the dorsal surface, so it is divided by this spinous process into two fossa, a supraspinous fossa above the spine, infraspinous fossa below the spine. So this supraspinous fossa, it provides attachment to a muscle of the same name called as supraspinatus and the infraspinous fossa provides attachment to the muscle of the same name called as infraspinatus. So the medial border on the dorsal aspect, it receives the insertion of three muscles. From superior angle to the root of the spine, it receives the insertion of levator scapulae. Opposite the root of the spine, it receives the insertion of rhomboidus minor. And from the root of the spine till the inferior angle, it receives the insertion of rhomboidus major muscle. And the lateral border, if you appreciate, you can see this separation here, a prominent ridge is present. So above this ridge, so this part provides origin to teres minor. Below the ridge, it provides origin to teres major. Whereas the inferior angle, in the dorsal aspect, it provides origin to few slips of the latissimus dorsi muscle. So these are the major attachments in the dorsal surface, supraspinatus from the supraspinous fossa, infraspinatus from the infraspinous fossa, 
levator scapulae extending from superior angle to the root, rhomboid is minor, rhomboid is major, teres minor and teres major. So if you see the processes, so first if you see the coracoid process, so it is a beak-like process extending anteriorly. So the tip of the process, it provides origin to coracobrachialis and the shorted of biceps brachii. And here there will be insertion of pectoralis minor muscle. It also receives the attachment or it provides attachment to some ligaments like uh, coracoacromial ligament extending from coracoid process to the acromial process and coracoclavicular ligament which, has again which again consists of conoid and the trapezoid parts. So these are the attachments for the coracoid process. So if you see the spinous process, as you can see there is got an upper surface which along with the supraspinous fossa provides attachment to supraspinatus and a lower surface which along with the infraspinous fossa provides attachment to the infraspinatus. So it has got an upper border and a lower border. So the upper border of the spine, it is continuous with the medial border of the acromion process. Similarly, the lower border is continuous with lateral border of acromion process. So these provide same attachments. So if you see the attachments, this upper border, it receives the attachment of the trapezius muscle and even the medial border of the acromion process receives the attachment of trapezius muscle. Whereas the lower border of the spine and also the lateral border of the acromion process, it provides origin to fibers of the deltoid. So this lower border, it provides origin to posterior fibers of deltoid. Whereas this lateral border of the acromion process where provides origin to middle fibers or acromial fibers of deltoid. If you see here, there are some elevations of the bone here, irregular elevations in between. So these provide attachment to the inter muscular fibrous septa so that makes the middle fibers or acromial fibers multipinnate in nature so these are the attachments for the spine and also for the acromial process and a ligament attached to the acromial process as already said so it provides attachment to a ligament called as coraco acromial ligament extending from coracoid process to the acromial process so next there is this glenoid fossa or glenoid cavity which forms a joint with the head of the humerus forming the shoulder joint. So just above and below the glenoid fossa there are two tubercles, supraglenoid tubercle and infraglenoid tubercle. So this supraglenoid tubercle it provides origin to the long head of biceps brachii which is intracapsular in origin but extra synovial. Whereas this infraglenoid tubercle provides attachment to the long head of triceps brachii which is both extra capsular and extra synovial part and near this superior border we can see a notch here at the junction of the root of the coracoid process and the medial aspect of the superior border so this is called as suprascapular notch so usually it is converted into a foramen by a ligament called as suprascapular ligament so there is a suprascapular foramen here Usually the suprascapular nerve passes through the foramen whereas suprascapular vessels it passes above the foramen. So these nerves and vessels once they reach the supraspinous fossa they will leave the supraspinous fossa through one more notch which is present between the spinous process and the glenoid cavity called as spinoglenoid notch. So it will pass through the spinoglenoid notch and enters the infraspinous fossa. So these are the major features and attachments of the scapula. So to summarize, so it consists a medial border, a thick lateral border and a thin superior border. So three angles, superior angle, inferior angle and the lateral angle where glenoid cavity is present. So two surfaces, a costal and a dorsal surface and three processes, the coracoid, the acromial and the spinous process. So to brief the attachments of the muscles, subscapularis, serratus anterior, shorted of biceps and coracobrachialis, pectoralis minor, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, levator scapulae, rhomboidus minor, rhomboidus major, few fibers of latissimus dorsi, teres minor, teres major, 
లాంగ్ ఎడ్ ఆఫ్ బైసిప్స్ బ్రేక్ అయి లాంగ్ ఎడ్ ఆఫ్ ట్రైసిప్స్ బ్రేక్ అయి ఫైబర్స్ ఆఫ్ ట్రెపీజియస్ మిడిల్ ఫైబర్స్ ఆఫ్ ద డెల్టాయిడ్ పోస్టీరియర్ ఫైబర్స్ ఆఫ్ ద డెల్టాయిడ్ అండ్ నియర్ దిస్ సూప్రా స్కాపులర్ నాచ్ దెర్ విల్ బీ ఆరిజిన్ ఆఫ్ ఇన్ఫీరియర్ ఫైబర్స్ ఆర్ ఇన్ఫీరియర్ బెల్లీ ఆఫ్ ద హోమోయాయిడ్ మసల్ సో ఇఫ్ ఇస్ ఈ ద మేజర్ లిగమెంట్ సో దెర్ ఇస్ సూప్రా స్కాపులర్ లిగమెంట్ కొరెకో క్లావికులర్ లిగమెంట్ అండ్ కొరెకో ఆక్రోమియల్ లిగమెంట్ సో దెర్ ఆర్ టూ జాయింట్స్ ఫౌండ్ బై ద స్కాపులర్ the glenoid cavity forms the joint with the head of the humerus the shoulder joint whereas the acromial process forms a joint with the clavicle the acromio clavicular joint part so these are the features of scapula do subscribe to the channel to appreciate see more such videos thank you